Okay guys, these are my predictions for this year's chemistry paper one for AQA. Now you have to remember that I am not an examiner. I do not know what is going to be in the exams. So you have to revise absolutely everything, not just what I mentioned in this video. To make your lives a little bit easier, don't forget over on my website you can get the free revision guide which you can download and get loads and loads of flashcards and to go with this video there is the predicted paper of what I think is going to come up. All of that available for you to download from my website. So there are a few things that we know are going to be in the exam. We know that 20% of the chemistry section of your GCSE is going to be maths. Now in a paper one that's where the mathsy topic is. So we can expect there to actually be quite a lot of maths in chemistry in this paper. I have written you so so many questions to help you practice this taking you right from the basics all the way up to some really really tricky calculations. But the things that we know are going to come up, I say no as much as I can know that they're going to come up, stuff like balancing equations. It comes up every single year. It is such a fundamental for chemistry that we have to be able to do this. Then we can expect mass of things to come up. It might not come up on its own, it might come up as part of a bigger question. So when we're talking about percentages or when we're talking about moles. The other thing we have to remember is that any part of the mass specification can be applied to any part of the chemistry specification. So they might throw something a little bit sneaky or a little bit tricky in here but we know there is going to be a lot of chemistry maths in this paper. We also know there is going to be a lot of practical in this paper as 15% of your qualification is now based on the practicals. Now, they've used a lot of the practicals already in the specimen papers, and it's unlikely but completely possible that they'll use those again. So not only do you need to know your practicals really well, so things like um, making salts, separating techniques, um, electrolysis, we need to be paying attention to our practical skills. So stuff like working out errors, stuff for looking for problems in um, a technique, and thinking about alternatives to techniques as well. When we're talking about topics that I think are likely to come up, I think they're gonna focus on things that have moved, either moved down from um, triple to having everybody teach them, or moved down from A level, or some things have just been jiggled around a lot. So there's a lot more emphasis now on um, group one and group seven and their reactions. Their states of things, so like solid, liquids and gas, that used to be in physics, it's now in chemistry and physics. So things that are new are going to be stuff that your teachers may not have taught very much before. So the examiners might focus on testing your teachers, testing whether your teachers have taught it to you properly. And then some of the trickiest subjects that used to be only for separate science but now everybody has to do are things like bond energy calculations. This ties into what I was saying earlier about there being a lot of maths in science. This is actually one of the trickier maths bits that you have to do. Um, because they can add in so many other things. They can add in balancing equations, they can add in drawing things to this, which will come up um, from topic two, your bonding and your structures. So this could be quite a big question. It could be quite a complicated question, this one. And then the last thing that used to be in just in separate science and now is everyone, is the development of the periodic table. So this will lend itself really, really well to um, an analysis question or interpretation question or even a nasty big six mark question. There are a few new things that um, are completely new to the specification. So previously, um, the other years before you got a formula sheet, you don't get a formula sheet. You get a periodic table, but you don't get a formula sheet. So we're talking about formulas of iron, you need to know those now, you need to know how to combine them to make a formula, which then could again be combined with something massy like balancing equations, and then tying it in something even bigger, like your bond energy calculations. It could get quite complicated. The reactivity series, again, you used to get given this, and now you have to know it. So the examiners might be looking to see how you're reacting, or how your teacher's reacting to the change in specification. The last thing that comes in ties in with your practical skills, so working out things like errors and uncertainties. How well can you read a bit of equipment? Um, do you know what the percentage error should be? There are a few topics that um, come up over and over and over again, 
and these are fantastic topics because because they come up so often we know what the answers are going to be um what we can get like standard pre-prepared answers um i've done loads of flashcards for you with these on standard pre-prepared answers for the exams so things like um alloys metals conducting electricity bonding is going to come up there is no way there is not going to be a big question on bonding the type of bonding i don't know it could be on um ionic bonding getting you to draw it remember ionic is the one with the square brackets getting you to talk about the bonding it could be simple covalence it could be giant covalence but there is going to be some type of bonding and it is more than likely going to involve you drawing something as well as talking about what is happening to the electrons so make sure you know your bonding really well make sure you know your differences between um like your diamond and your graphite and your properties of ionic and covalent giant covalent and simple covalent these sort of things come up over and over and over again and these are fantastic because you can go in with basically pre-prepared answers Another thing that comes up a lot is neutralisation and pH. So just learn the neutralisation equation. Um, I've seen it worth one mark before, I've seen it worth two marks, three marks and four marks, basically for writing down exactly the same thing. So learn it and fingers crossed it'll be worth four marks this year. Testing for gases um, and any other tests that you can think of are really, really common things that they ask. So how do you test for oxygen? How do you test for carbon dioxide? Um, these are kind of the, like the little things that people tend to forget Yet. so that's what the examiner is going to be focusing on things that they think you're going to forget or things that they think you're not going to revise then we move on to the extra stuff for separate science so combine science people um good luck go and watch the whole topic video after this make sure you've done like all of your notes make sure you've checked through the revision guide the specification and go try and make notes from the whole topic videos and have a look at the quick fire questions separate science people we have a little bit more work left to do there is quite a lot of new stuff there's quite a lot of extra stuff in this topic for separate science one of the things that kind of crosses over into combined science is titration calculations now it used to be in the old specification that every single year there would be a question on titration whether it would be the method or the maths the method or the maths and every single year they would alternate it this year we can't really tell what it's going to be because we don't have last year's exams because they don't exist so i'm gonna go with it either being a big bonds energy calculation or a big titration calculation now this obviously is going to depend on what they decide to put in the combined science paper as well as the separate science paper because i reckon they're going to be pretty similar but we can't really tell so it is worth learning both of your big maths things so your bond energy calculations and your titration calculations really really well a few other little maths things that are likely to come up because they're just for separate science and they haven't been on the specification before they've come down from a level so we're talking about atom economy and we're talking about volume of gases both of these little things not too complicated not like titration calculations but they are likely to come up because they are um, new and they are a little bit tricksy and then lastly um, cells uh, simple cells how they work and then we need to be thinking about strong and weak acids because both of these are topics that have come down from a level or have shifted around slightly and these are topics that i think they're likely to ask questions on maybe a little question but both of these acids weak and strong acids and cells hydrogen fuel cells could be expanded into a really really big question um so good luck guys fingers crossed like i just said to the combined science people who have left after this go and watch the whole topic video make sure you know everything in there go through the checklist in the revision guide make sure you can tick everything off and i'll be keeping all of my fingers crossed for you ouch This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.